We heartily welcome you, Mr. Suresh Prabhakar Prabhu. It's such an honor to have you, and we request you to please address the audience. Honorable Justice, and I can see a lot of luminaries, including my soccer friends who are in the audience. So it's a little embarrassing to address such a distinguished gathering. Congratulations for such a nice idea. To honor those who have to yet begin their life, because we believe the life begins at 40. <laughs> but at the same time, I must thank them for ensuring that this rule below 40 won't apply to the guests. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to be here. As you can see, the lawyers actually not only people begin their life at 40, but probably the lawyers begin their life a little later also. But as you grow old, you acquire more skills, argumentative ideas, and therefore, I'm sure those who have won the award today are the ones who will be even shining more in the years to come. We have a, always a dilemma before a modern society. If without laws, you cannot run the society. But in parliament, because overactive and make many laws, it's also harmful to society. So to strike the right balance, and have a trade-off between the necessity of a law and not to have a society which will have more laws that will actually be trust upon the people. And in that, it's the best person to judge what we really need to be the lawyer. Making law is also becoming a very challenging issue now. I remember when I was a minister in Warmton Forest, we were required to draft the law for biodiversity. Because we had signed an international convention and if we had not met the law, we would be exposing our biodiversity for exploitation. And luckily, or unfortunately, normally it's good for the draftsman to make a law because nowadays you go to website and download and make a law from some countries and actually make a good cut and paste job. <coughs> but in this case, there is no country who has drafted it except Costa Rica. And therefore, Costa Rica is a very unique situation because they have a very rich biodiversity. So the challenge was how to make law. So we did something different. We called all the stakeholders who were at loggerheads with each other. The people wanting human rights so that people should not be taken away from forest. And there were people who believe that conservation is the most important, so take as many people as possible from outside. So human rights before animal rights, conservationist against development oriented ideas, and we brought all of them in one room. And you'll be surprised, the secretary of that time, secretary of the ministry, a very worried man. I said, don't call police, things will be all right. <laughs> and actually, we drafted a fantastic law. Because we didn't use any of our ideas, but we actually got people to participate into law-making exercise. So making law is going to be complex, but at the same time, with participation of stakeholders, it might be bigger easy. And then, of course, passing of law. And I've been in the parliament for the last 22 years, and I've been seeing that so many legislations keep coming. Now, of course, I don't have to worry because I have to look up to the ministries. But otherwise, as a member of parliament, you have to apply yourself to such complex issues without realizing what implications it will have. So I think there again we need to have some sort of a relationship with the society and the expert like lawyers to actually understand the implications of the law that we are going to be making ultimately. And then of course the administration of law. That again is a very important issue before it goes to the courts for evaluating the law and its actual implementation. But administration of law itself be difficult because I have seen, again just drawing on my experience as environment minister, I was saying you can, our environment laws incidentally, 
I'm probably best in the world. But the challenge is we cannot implement them for a simple reason. It's a like type of population that we have, the type of issues that we are to face with. And therefore, any society where people themselves want to follow the law, implementation becomes easy. Where you cannot implement a law against the will of the people. And that's again a challenge. So I think making law, and that's what I was saying, the paradox. What law? How much legislation we should have? What extent we should have? How to make law? How to implement? I think they are going to be very, very complex issues. Because sometimes it's a good for a budding lawyers because more the laws, we'll have more professional opportunities. But I think over a period of time, we'll have to actually come to this. How do you make law? How many laws you should make? How to implement them? And unless people themselves want to follow the law, it will be extremely difficult even for the courts or for the government to actually implement them. And therefore, I think we have a very interesting and challenging times ahead. And I'm sure with such young lawyers becoming now the new stars, I'm sure we'll be able to address the issues more effectively. I wanted to be a lawyer myself, which I did. I studied law. But I also did not my charter law. And when I looked around, the quality of lawyers, I said, I, I cannot just compete with them. So I preferred a better option and practice as a chapter about it for quite some time. But then I realized that this was my dream actually. That's my father had to make a compromise with my father. I said, I want to be a lawyer. He said, you study law, but practice as a chapter about it. And which I did. But I think one something which I could do to be practicing lawyer, I almost did it when Mr. N.K.B. Salve. As a minister, 1996, when I became minister and lost it in few days after that, that was his first cabinet. He told me, why don't you start practicing as a lawyer in Supreme Court? I said, I never practice even in district court. How can I just come to Supreme Court? He said, no, no, you do it. And he gave me a name of a person. He said, you go and meet him. He's like you. He's a charter award and a lawyer. At that time, I think he was below 40. So I think he didn't give an award. But he now, one of the most successful lawyers, is his own son, Harish Salim. And therefore, I think he told me why don't you go and talk to him because we are a good friend. But I realized then, after meeting him, I don't think I can compete with any one of them. So I think I opted for a better option to retreat, which I did rightly. So I really congratulate once again all of you. And I'm sure your life now will begin and begin in a way that lawyers will be a better society than we want. Incidentally, I think one profession which has dominated politics in the US is a lawyer. The maximum number of elected representatives in the US have been the lawyers. So I don't know whether it's good for US or bad for US. But I think in India one day, I think we'll also see some great lawyers. We have a very distinguished lawyers as my cabinet colleagues, Sir Arun Jaitley, Sir Shankar Prasad and many others. And so in opposition, some of the stalwarts who have been actually with lawyers also. So we really admire lawyers, respect them, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much. But while I'm introducing and reading out the feats of our rising stars that are coach for the Talent Scholarship for Excellence in Academics. Now, it's not just academics, it is actually spearheaded a few legal ventures in the PPP infrastructure space. And organizations like Delight and Rising in Asia.